I'm always the guy that if the door is squeaking, I want the oil in it. And here, in this case, I have trying to keep an amplifier because I love music in my shop. And I was trying to keep my amplifier cool. So I went and bought this fan from Walmart right here. And it's like, it's just a table fan. And I said, wait a minute, I could put this on top of my amplifier down like this so it could hover down and and keep my amplifier cool. And I, and I did this for a few years. And then I said, wait a minute, if I want to add another piece of equipment, I can't put it on top of here. And let's say if I have the amplifier down here and I got to stack some stuff on top of it, this isn't gonna work. So I had to come up with a, a new design. So I went down the street where there's this uh, electronics store and they sell these fans for like cooling computers and electronics. And this one was like, you know, like I think about $15, which I said, man, I can afford one of these. And I started looking at the dist the thickness, and I said, I bet you this fan probably blows as much as this fan that I had. And I said, so I started thinking about it like you, you should in your design and said, wait a minute. I needed to, to make basically a table. This will be the bottom of it. So these are like, this is a table flipped upside down with table legs sticking out. And then I'm once I mount this fan, and when I mount the fan, I'm looking for screws that I can drill a hole from the top and have it go through these, these holes right here. And what I did with this is I found out if this is flush with this set of screws right here, which is a uh, number eight, two and a half inches long, that I could actually put a nut on either side and if this is flush this will actually allow this piece to be a half inch above the the i mean uh the surface so it can breathe and it could also have a half an inch of surface to be blowing down on it now if you look at it this way if this is an inch and a half thick i needed to make a, a two and a half inch leg which is what every one of these are. It's just nothing but a two inch dowel that you get at like Home Depot or Lowe's. And I cut these on a table saw, I can show you later on. But anyway, I needed to have that extra inch so I would have a half inch of breathing space either way when it's mounted here in the middle of the table. So basically, so this fan works great. When they sell them to you, there's gonna be just this extra little plug-in wire and you can get these things either 12 volt or you can get them 110, which is what I've got here because I, I, I like to plug it in. And then what I decided is that when you make one of these and you're cutting it out, I'm cutting it out of half inch plywood. And this is where I use this clear pine that I ripped out of a three quarter inch board and then ripped the pine again so that it would fit this half, half inch plywood. And usually when you're always capping wood, you have the decision of do you bring that board over or do you bring this board out? This is how it sits onto the piece, so you want a full piece covering it, just as you do in the back side. So this way the back and the front don't have this protrusion of the trim out. And when this stuff is done, it's basically putting this board into a your vise and cutting the trim which i do with uh, like a japanese saw i cut it and then i just take some white pva glue and put it right down on the plywood this is capped so you don't see the layers of the plywood and if you use solid wood you wouldn't need this but anyway i just put it on with tape just masking tape holding it down just till it dries and I do all the edges. But anyway, I'm just saying a lot of people, you know, like I said, a face board, you wanna turn around and have that whole board go straight across so you're not looking at this board coming through the corners. Anyway, that's what I did here. This gets painted black and I got a, a satin black 
so that it's not a gloss black. So it's basically going to be, you know, like that with the fan underneath it. Well, anyway, let me show you this uh, with the feet really came from like a three foot long dowel and all I did was just take two and a half increments and I actually cut this on my table saw where I put a piece of tape telling me the distance between that and the blade and just kept knocking them out. And what I decided on is that these are good spacers. These are basically about half inch little gap spaces of wood. All you gotta do is just glue this down right here. It, it, that's about it. It doesn't take any screws or anything, especially if you just use a good, strong PVA glue. But that was the way that I did all the corners of the blocks is that I moved this around so that it would give me a space distance between the front and from the side because you're in the corner. I could do that on all the you know, units of putting the, the board down. As long as you got that, these as a little gap space and you do each one and you're done. Uh, this one is just fine and center and, and drilling for your four bolt holes. You can actually do this by laying this down and taking a hand drill with a, a twist bit and drilling just partially into the wood. And that's going to turn around and make your holes perfect that they fit into these holes. Because you use the piece itself as a jig to do each one. You do this one, then hold that down, do this one. And I keep putting a screw back in that hole that I just drilled. So this way, once I've got into that hole, that's going to lock it in. Then I hold it and drill this one. And then I'll drop another bolt back in that hole. You know, you can always take a piece of tape and put it on your drill bit. So you only go so deep in. Like I said, then when you do your third one, drop it down into its hole. By that time, this thing is never going to move and you're going to have a perfect hole for yeah. the last one. So that's kind of my way. And then later on, you can then take this off, clamp it to a, a flat scrap yeah. piece of plywood and, and drill all the way through and not tear out the front. But all these bolts are coming in from the finish side at the top. Let's say you've got now all your holes drilled for this, even though I haven't drilled this yet. Your, your screws are going to come from the other side, so you have nothing but a nice finished dome uh, head on it. And I do this after I've already uh, painted and primered this wood. But when it goes in with these two and a half inch long screws that I, I picked out, at first, I was going to try to make them go down long enough to put the jamming of one nut here and one on that side. And then I realized it's perfect. So once these things, this is actually the air coming outside. So basically, that's going to be standing up on the bottom right there. So yeah. basically, you're going to have a nut on this side and a nut on that side. And that works for all four bolts. So you don't need a nut here and you don't need a nut at the bottom. So this way you have a cleaner line, but remember with two and a half inches of this uh, screw, it should be flush on the finished side of the head coming out of the fan. And that's what's worked for me. Anyway, this is another one that I built at the same time. That's one I didn't finish and made it in parts. This is one I've been using. And so it's basically, what I found out is the standard width of stereo's equipment is 17 inches. So, I mean, even back on this piece, I made it with that 17 inches. And there's also kind of a standard. These two are identical. So this way, this is a, a 14 and a 5 eighths plus, basically, as far as that's the depth and this is the front face. And so you can see where these screws went right through the top, like I was talking about. And then if you look at this side, this is now flipped over like the other one. So with the fan, like I was saying, with these screws, they'll be flush on this. This is the side that blows down. But I have a half inch space so air can get up in here. 
And then when this is sitting down on something, there's a half inch of space of air that it can blow sideways. So this is more of the finished product right here. And if you notice, there's your double nut. And then there's a nut right here to keep that screw from traveling up and down on the plywood. So there's one nut, two nuts, three nuts per uh, screw. Anyway, this is it. And if you notice, I still did the same profile of gap space between you know the corners like I was talking about that should be done here when you glue them on this is all four of them is done this way so they're just you know that was just a simple way of just saying how am I going to what you know do it and once you just put a, a little bit of glue and work it down and this is before it's painted you want to get all your your feet glued Anyway, this is more the finished product that I'm currently using. And it's like, you know, it's nothing but a table with four legs out of dowels, two inch dowels, a fan for about uh, $15 at an electronics store and some uh, uh, bags of screws and nuts. And it's uh, a little bit of paint. And I mean, this stuff is like satin. It's, you don't want to use gloss or it'll look different on your stereo, but you know what? This is a good design for even computers. You know, anytime you can see an opportunity to make an improvement, what's holding you back? That's what I'm trying to do on this channel is make people think out of the box. When there's a problem, solve it. Come up with something and get a big smile on your face. That's what I do every time I solve a problem. Anyway, come back, enjoyed your time here in my shop, and let's learn some more. Thanks for being here.